An open expanse of grass and shrubs surrounds you on every side. Huge mammals roam across the landscape, lazily chewing on their tough vegetable food. The sun shines down through drifting clouds. A light breeze whispers through the tall grass. Welcome to the grassland ecosystem. Welcome back, explorers. As you might have guessed, today we'll be learning about the grassland ecosystem. Now, this episode was shot in Yellowstone National Park's Lamar Valley, one of the few true grasslands that I've ever had the pleasure of visiting. While that means I won't be able to do as much on-location reporting as you're used to, I still think the footage is pretty incredible, and I can't wait to show you this awesome natural area. So, without further ado, let's learn about the incredible plants and animals that make up the grassland ecosystem. As you might guess, the most abundant producer in the grassland is, well, grass. Due to some combination of soil composition, climate, and other factors, tall woody plants such as trees are a relatively uncommon sight in these areas. The lack of tall trees allows lots of sunlight to reach the ground, and provides space for thousands of smaller plants to thrive. The difference in producers between grasslands and forests make a huge difference for the type of animals that you can find here. There's no leaf litter or fallen logs for insects or reptiles to hide under, so they have to find other ways to make their homes. Fortunately, the grass itself provides many opportunities for primary consumers. Animals like this ground squirrel are able to take advantage of the abundant food by fixing the housing situation themselves. Tunneling underground, these cute little mammals construct burrows that lead deep underground and help them hide from predators that could easily spot them in the open. They will run out of their burrows to collect food and then dart back in with their prizes to eat in peace. As they search for and collect food, they also help spread the seeds of different plants moving them to new areas. Burrowing is a behavior exhibited by many small grassland mammals, and even some insects, which may have trouble defending themselves against predators. But not all primary consumers are as defenseless as the ground squirrel, and not all of them have to hide from predators. Many grasslands are inhabited by massive mammals, such as bison, which are among the most ecologically important animals that exist in these places. These gentle giants, and other mammals like them throughout the world, both exist in and help to build grasslands. Huge hooves churn up the soil, breaking down dead plant and animal matter and plowing it for new grass seeds to take root. Bison poop contains lots of nutrients, such as nitrogen and phosphorus, acting as a natural fertilizer and speeding up plant growth. As grazing animals, Bison will often mow down both grass and young trees as they eat, and grasses are much better at growing back after a bison munch than trees are. All of those bison behaviors help to make the grasslands healthier and expand to cover more area. Bigger grasslands means more food and space for bison, and more bison means bigger and healthier grasslands. All the primary consumers in this ecosystem represent a whole lot of energy and that certainly doesn't go unnoticed. Grasslands are also home to some of the largest terrestrial carnivores on the planet. An adult black bear lumbers across the landscape, his powerful nose sniffing out any potential food. Black bears don't usually chase down their prey, and most of their diet is actually plant-based, but they certainly won't pass up a free meal that can be scavenged from a roadkill victim like this deer. Other predators, such as wolves, are more active hunters, killing sick or old animals and thereby leaving more resources available for healthier animals and keeping prey populations in check. When top predators are present in a grassland, they help make sure that these large herds of animals don't spend too much time grazing in one particular area and give the plants plenty of time to regenerate between feeding events. While insects and mammals are usually the most abundant animals in grasslands, there are still interesting reptiles and amphibians in these locations. There are plenty of lizards around to hunt the abundant insects, and plenty of diurnal snakes such as coach whips to eat the lizards. By nightfall, nocturnal serpents such as the western diamondback rattlesnake may lie in wait 
as they ambush unsuspecting small mammals. And a few special salamander species even utilize the rare pond or two as a handle for survival. Grasslands are important to you and to me for a variety of reasons. Like forests, grasslands contain lots of producers, which help filter out pollution from our air. Also, because these ecosystems tend to be relatively flat and contain fertile soil, they are often used to grow crops such as wheat or corn, which make up a large part of our diets. Many scientists also believe that the huge herds of grassland-dwelling animals gave the first humans the food that they needed to survive in the harsh Ice Age conditions. Thanks so much for joining me on today's adventure in learning what grassland ecosystems are, what kinds of organisms we can find there, and why they're so important to you and me. On our next adventure, we'll learn about our very first type of aquatic ecosystem, the river. Until then, stay curious and keep adventuring everywhere. This is Ben Zeno of The Wild Report, signing out.